afternoon, everybody. And I'm Dr. Nogakawki from ALS Mall Foundation. And first and foremost, I wish to thank the organizers for this wonderful meeting in this great city. And today, I'm going to delineate our work, the work of our emerging organization in beating aimed at beating the ALS in the most generous nation in the world. And that nation, that country, is Malta. For those that don't know where Malta is, I can tell you that Malta is a European island state in the center or middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It's actually one of the most uh, uh, tiny countries in the world, therefore you may, uh, you may have not heard about it. Um, uh, it's actually an archipelago composed of seven tiny islands, um, only two being inhabited, and those are Malta and the sister island, small sister island of Rozo. Collectively, uh, Malta totals uh, a landmass of 316 square kilometers, which means that it can fit within the United States more than 30,000 times. And that's an astonishing number. Now, um, allow me to tell you some uh, um, interesting uh, and at times amusing, but certainly true facts about Malta. First and foremost, I can tell you that Malta is super old. So, our country boasts of up to 11 megalithic temples, with some dating more than 5,000 before Christ. And that means that UNESCO lists these as being the oldest freestanding structures in the world, so older than the pyramids, and older than UK famous Stonehenge. So sorry for the Brits, Brits present here today. Um, Malta is also the place where blockbuster movies are made. Right? And so um, I can tell you that Gladiator, probably have seen that, and Troy, recently Assassin's Creed, Captain Phillips, and the world famous TV series, Game of Thrones, were all filmed in sunny and beautiful Malta. And allow me to tell you a little bit about the people of Malta, or we call them the Maltese. So Malta is home to a little over 420,000 inhabitants. That's a tiny number. Uh, however, during the summer months, we receive up to 2 million tourists. So we always say that during those um, hot and uh, um, humid months, a coup d'etat is always, is always possible. <laughs> and the Maltese are actually passionate people. They um, usually defend, I mean, they choose a side and defend it till their death. So at 92% uh, voter the turnout is actually one of the highest in the world. And talking about rich and famous, I can point to many Maltese scattered around the world, but most famous, I think, is um, Tedder Joseph Calais, for those that love opera, I do. And uh, Joseph Calais recently opened the uh, New York Metropolitan Opera uh, 1718 season uh, in their beautiful production of, um, uh, of Bellini's, Bellini's Norma, and that's, uh, that was amazing. And uh, talking about opera, I can also tell you that in Malta, especially in the small island of Gozo, there is more opera per square kilometer than anywhere in the world. <laughs> now, um, being tiny, um, my country doesn't feature that much in the top uh, lists um, of international rankings. And therefore, it is a surprise to many uh, that my country uh, finds itself in the top places um, within the list, uh, listing most generous countries or nations in the Western world. Indeed, uh, the World Giving Index, published by the Charities Aid Foundation, consistently um, lists Malta as the top country um, in terms of the percentage number of people that donate to charity, that donated to charity in the last month. Indeed, at 75 to 80 percent, that means that two out of three countries, two, two out of three and what is citizens, donate money to charity. So the setting was favorable for us to start uh, 
um, raising funds directed towards ALS care and research. But we had a big problem. And that problem was that in 2015, you remember very quite well that that was, uh, sorry, 2014, that was the year of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, in Malta, there was no national uh, ALS charity. However, this viral social phenomenon inspired a young individual whose name is Bjorn Formosa, who unexpectedly, a year later, in July 2015, received um, unexpectedly a death sentence, an ALS diagnosis. This young individual, um, in a short time period, successfully founded ALS Malta and organized the first uh, fundraising event. And that was a massive ice bucket challenge. And uh, Bjorn uh, stole the heart of the Maltese nation, and therefore the time was ripe uh, a few months later for our budding organization to organize the first TV fundraising campaign on Malta's um, most watched prime time <coughs> TV program, and that program we called Sherlock. It was a success because uh, in that evening, close to half a million euro were collected. Now, that allowed us uh, to uh, start our work as a foundation. In fact, our first board meeting uh, occurred in January 2016. And uh, a few months later, basically, um, um, uh, after uh, Bjorn's wedding, um, um, in the honeymoon of Bjorn and Maria, we you know these uh, um, guys now quite quite well, um, my group, ALS group at the University of Malta, Malta's main university report at the Univers University of La Malta, um, we launched uh, with the organization uh, the first uh, research project, the first ALS research project. And this year, um, we organized again another highly successful TV fundraising campaign. We succeeded in one evening to raise one million euro, and that went into um, the setting up of uh, Malta's first residential home in, uh, for, ALS patient, uh, for ALS patients. And that uh, home now has the name of Dar Bjorn, translated in English means Bjorn's home. Now, the aim of our organization is, is to beat ALS. So how are we doing it from a research point of view? Um, first thing that we did was for the foundation to uh, fund the uh, creation and maintenance of an ALS uh, MND biobank, a, a unique ALS MND biobank. We are making use of this uh, biobank to uh, screen the DNA or the genome of uh, um, our ALS uh, patients. And uh, that is allowing us to find those faults, those variants in the DNA that um, increase the risk uh, of ALS or that cause ALS. We think that by finding those genes, uh, disease-causing genes, genes that modify the course of the disease, genes that increase the risk uh, of ALS, we think that finding those will allow us to target those genes by precision medicine initiatives, and in doing so, we can develop a therapy tailored, targeted for our Maltese ALS population. So, how did we uh, create the biobank? So we went to, we targeted patients registered with the um, organization, with our organization. We went mostly to their homes. We collected the blood sample and detailed clinical information subject to consent. Then we went to the lab, we extracted the, the DNA, and we did the sequencing. We read the complete DNA, the whole genome sequencing. And in our precious biobank, we have few patients, just 14, um, but we think that this is the tip of the iceberg because we're constantly finding more patients. Most of them are male, and the majority of the patients are more than 15 years old. And a few, we have a few uh, familial ALS cases. Now, interestingly, if we uh, found out that in Malta, most of the patients concentrate in the south of the country. And we think that there could be a link between um, uh, uh, some polluting industries 
which are present only in the south of the country. And those are shipbuilding industry, power generation plants, uh, and airplane maintenance, and even the airstrip, they are located in the south. Now, how are we using the uh, information that we gain from the biobank, especially the genetic information, to reverse ALS symptoms? This is uh, a big target, but that is where we want to go. So we're making use of animal models. And uh, because we're a tiny nation, the tiny budget, we are making use of fruit flies. And the fruit flies are cheap to culture, to maintain, to, to manipulate, but importantly, they are close to us at a genetic level. Indeed, I can tell you that more than 75% of human disease related genes, including the genes that have been linked to ALS so far, they are present in the fly DNA. So, in the lab, we are introducing patient mutations in the fly DNA, and we're seeing whether we get ALS in flies, meaning get flies which have muscle weakness, and that means that these flies cannot um, climb, cannot move, cannot fly. Importantly, we're making use of these ALS animal models to screen for drugs that uh, improve the ALS symptoms, to screen for genes that modify the course of the disease, and to do gene repair. Okay, we, at the moment we have these innovative gene editing therapies, uh, gene editing um, techniques, uh, methods, uh, which have been developed by the Broad Institute here in Boston, amongst other uh, key institutes. And we think that by using these strategies, we can develop therapies that uh, can reverse, can potentially reverse ALS symptoms. So, in conclusion, I can tell you that in just two years of operation, um, our uh, organization, ALS Malta, has worked tirelessly to increase ALS awareness in my country, in Malta, and our success can be measured in numbers. Indeed, in just two years, um, more than three euro per capita, per person, were donated to our organization, and that is a very big number. And uh, we have improved patient quality of life substantially, and our efforts have culminated in the opening up uh, of the first residential home for ALS patients recently, last month, November. And uh, at the moment, we are strengthening our national ALS research program, and we're doing so by investing in people. And therefore, we are awarding scholarships, branded Bjorn for Mosa scholarships, to young, talented individuals, to young scientists, and training these people to become Malta's leading ALS MND investigators of tomorrow. We have so far successfully sequenced, whole genome sequenced, 30 of our uh, ALS patients, and at the moment we're doing data mining to identify those faults, those defects that cause ALS, and we have embarked on a path towards identifying um, certain um, therapies that might reverse ALS. And uh, we believe that Malta's model can serve as a paradigm for um, budding organizations, emerging organizations in tiny and not so tiny countries. And I can end by telling you that our work has only just begun.